Hello friends, this video on human health and diseases part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the next disease we will discuss is ascariasis. Now as the name itself suggests which pathogen causes it, it is a worm that is the round worm ascaris and that is why the name is ascariasis. So these worms use human body again as host to mature from the larva to the adult form and these adult forms sometimes can be extremely long up to even 30 centimeters in length. Now most of the infected person will have mild cases with no symptoms. Sometimes even if you have these worms inside your body there will be no symptoms but heavy infection can give rise to complications. So now let us see how these uh, pathogens enter inside our body. So they also enter through contaminated water, vegetables and fruits. Now these kind of worms, the round worms especially, are found in raw vegetables and fruits. You would have often seen vegetables like cauliflower or cabbage. They often tend to have these kind of worms which are very clearly visible with naked eye. Now all we need to do is you need to wash the vegetables really well before you cook that. Because sometimes what happens is even if you cook it, you think that once I am cooking the vegetables, so obviously that, uh, that particular worm will die. Now even if the worms die, sometimes what happens is inside the worms, they, they actually they hatch small eggs and even if they enter inside your body, that can cause big problems later. So th this is how they enter inside our body. So what happens is once the eggs of these worms are ingested and they are taken in, the, the eggs hatch in the small intestine. So they primarily affect the intestine part. So once they reach the intestine, the eggs reach the intestine, these eggs will hatch and they will form new young worms. And these larvae will migrate through the bloodstream to the lungs and they can also cause symptoms of asthma and gradually they, the larva will mature to form adult in the small intestine. So that is how the human being is a host for these organisms because from eggs to larva to the mature worm everything happens inside the intestine. Now these adult worms live in the intestine till they die. So they are actually spending their whole lifetime inside the human body. Now, However, these adult worms, sometimes if the infection is too high, if only one or two worms are there, sometimes they do not cause any problem at all as well. But when there are too many worms, the infection is very heavy. In that case, it can cause pain, nausea or bleeding. So all these things can happen. So some of the symptoms are internal bleeding, fever, muscular pain, anemia, blocked intestinal passage. So now since these worms are present primarily in the intestine, so they will cause issues with the intestinal passage. Now how do we treat them? So they are again treated with medication. They can be easily treated with medication. Cleanliness, washing vegetables and fruits is a must for cure and prevention because this is where the source of infection lies. Now the eggs come out the, egg, the eggs which are ingested and they also come out through the feces which cause contamination of water and soil. Therefore, it needs to be taken care that the feces or the excreta are disposed of at the right place. Otherwise, it will unnecessarily cause water and soil pollution. Let's now talk about filariasis or elephantiasis. So this is a disease which is caused by a pathogen again which is a worm that is the filarial worm called Bucheraria. So ascariasis was caused by the round worm and filariasis is caused by the filarial worm. Now you might wonder why the name elephantiasis. So what does it I mean, how is it related to elephant that the name is elephantiasis? Now, in this disease, what happens is there is a huge enlargement of a particular area of the body. For example, mostly the lower limbs and the genital part, they get extremely enlarged. So they become so huge that elephant is an animal which is extremely huge, right? So one part of the body becomes so huge that it looks like an elephant and that is why the name is elephantiasis because elephant resembles something which is extremely huge. 
So now how this pathogen that is the filarial worm enters inside the body. So the female mosquito bite transmit the disease. So here also there is a female mosquito which is involved and it acts as the transmitting agent like how you have in case of malaria. So it primarily affects the lymphatic vessels. Now in this case, the lymphatic vessels are affected and that is why the lymphatic vessels tend to swell up and they get swollen so much that the entire part of the body gets swollen so badly. Now accumulation of lymph in the affected area cause swelling. Now these lymphatic vessels, what do they contain? Like blood vessels contain blood. Similarly, the lymphatic vessels contain the tissue fluid or the lymph. Now when too much of lymph gets accumulated in that particular area, so what will happen? The lymphatic vessels will swell. And when the lymphatic vessels swell, that particular area will also get swollen. It causes severe inflammation of organs. So some of the symptoms of uh, elephantiasis are swollen lower limbs. Now, as you can see in this picture, so if you see this lower limb and the genital part, it is so badly swollen. So this is the problem with this disease. So swollen lower limbs, swollen genitals or breasts, fever, pain in and around the testicles. Now, when the lower limb becomes so much swollen, it becomes very difficult to move from one place to another as well. Now, how do we treat this disease? It can be treated with a combination of steroids and anti-inflammatory drugs. However, it has to be given in low dose. So this uh, disease can be treated only gradually. So a sudden very high dose of anti-inflammatory drugs should not be given. So gradually it will uh, get treated over a period of time. And also antibiotics are helpful if filarial worms are present in symbiosis with bacteria. Because it has been seen that some of the filarial worms, they share a symbiotic relationship with bacteria. So wherever filarial worms are present, bacteria also uh, are, live in connection to them. So if antibiotics are given, the antibiotics will help to get rid of the bacterial infection. So at least one thing will be gone. And for the filarial worms, this anti-inflammatory drugs and the steroids will help. But it has to be given gradually in low doses. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes, and take an online test. Thank you once again.